lucky for joining me on this walk. I knew Hazel would come with me, but I didn't think you would too. Yeah, you know it's Earth Month and my watch said I should do some outdoor activities to appreciate the Earth. So, here I am. Spike, you knew I'd want to go with you once you lent me your umbrella. <laughs> That's why I lent it to you. Plus, I really wanted to wear my new raincoat. It looks good, Spike. And it gives me a chance to wear my new rain gear as well. I'm just glad it's just a light drizzle and not pouring rain. Sometimes I wonder where all this rain comes from. And how is the world not completely flooded with water by now? When it rains so much all over the world. Spike, you know that the rain comes from the clouds. You're right, Hazel, but there's so much more to the water cycle than just rain coming down from the clouds. To answer your question, Spike, the reason why the Earth isn't flooded with water is because all the water that's on the Earth just runs in a cycle. There's no new water that comes in or old water that goes out. It's already here. But what about water from a water bottle? Isn't that new water? I mean, they're selling it as new at the stores. <laughs> that water has been here from the beginning of time. It just went through the water cycle like all the water on Earth does. It's new in the sense that it was bottled from a spring. But that water in the bottle has been on Earth from the beginning. When God created the Earth, water already existed. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the Earth. Now the Earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. See, God created water before he even created the day, the night, the sky, and the land, which he created to separate the water to make seas and oceans. Oh, this is very interesting. Lucky, can you tell us more about this water cycle? Yeah, sure, if you're interested. Let's see, where should we begin? Maybe at the beginning? That's the thing with cycles, there really isn't a true beginning. But let's start with how much water actually exists on Earth. The Earth consists of about 71% water and the other 29% is land. Whoa, that's a whole lot of water. Yup, water is an essential element for life. So there are many forms of precipitation besides rain. Do you guys know what the other forms are? Pause. Wondering what the word precipitation means? Precipitation means to fall to the Earth's surface as a form of water. Resume. There's snow, right? I do love playing in the snow. Oh, there's hail and sleet too. You kids are smart and right. There are six types of precipitation. Rain, drizzle, snow, hail, sleet, and the lesser known grapple, which are like snow pellets. I'd like to see grapple someday. Maybe you will. All of these forms of precipitation are made from water molecules, or H2O. So, like Hazel said, rain comes from the clouds. But how does the water molecules get into the clouds? Oh, I have no idea. See, the sun heats up the water that's on the earth and turns it into water vapor. The water vapor then rises through the sky. This process is called evaporation. Oh, I wish I could see evaporation. Actually, you can, Spike. When mom cooks on the stove and is boiling water, the steam that rises from the pot is water vapor. That's basically evaporation. Just don't get too close to the pot though. It's going to be hot. Look, it's diamond. Hey guys, I figured I'd join you. What are you guys doing? Lucky is teaching us about the water cycle. That's cool. Yeah, I'm sure you can help me explain it to them. Jump in whenever you want. So, the water vapors rise high into the sky. They form into tiny droplets of water and come together to make clouds. The water droplets also mix in with gases and other particles in the air to make a cloud. Yup, this process is called condensation. Condensation, huh? 
I wish I could see that too. You can, Spike. When Mom boils water on the stove and then she puts the lid on top of the pot, the water droplets that form on the lid is the process of condensation. Oh, that's great! Two processes I can see, evaporation and condensation. What's next, Lucky? As water vapor rises and forms water droplets within the cloud, the cloud gets bigger and bigger. These water droplets then combine together until they are too heavy to be held in the cloud, and then they fall down from the cloud. This is precipitation. Precipitation can come in many forms. Yeah, we know. Rain, drizzle, snow, hail, sleep, and grapple, which is a snow pellet. Okay, I didn't know grapple. We just went over the forms of precipitation. As rain falls, it goes everywhere, like it is on us right now. The rain falls into the oceans, rivers, streams, forests, and little boys and girls like you two. <laughs> Some of the water that falls goes deep into the ground and gets stored as groundwater. It can stay there for a long time. Yup, and those three processes, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation make up the water cycle. Water on the earth continually goes through these processes. I have a question for you, Lucky. So, ice is made up of water, right? That's right, Hazel. What happens in cold places like Antarctica? Does the ice just remain there and not go through the water cycle? Hmm, that's a really good question. I never thought about that. It is a great question. Good thing I went over this in earth science. The ice still goes through the water cycle. It just does it through a process called sublimation. Sublimation is when ice turns into water vapor without melting into water first. Sublimation is when a substance goes from a solid state directly to a gaseous state and bypasses the liquid state. You said a lot there that I don't understand, but it seems like there's no getting around the water cycle. Sorry, I guess I got a little carried away and nope. There's no stopping the water cycle. It's a cycle that keeps going around and around. I wish I could see sublimation. Is there a way, Lucky? Actually, there is, but it may take a while. If you put an ice cube in the freezer, over time, the ice cube will become smaller. That's sublimation. That's pretty cool because ice cubes can't melt in the freezer. You got that right, Hazel. Mom and Aunt Renee were actually cooking when I left. Maybe if we get back in time, we can see both evaporation and condensation. We are already seeing and feeling precipitation. Hmm, <laughs> you got that right, Hazel. And if anything, we can boil some water and make hot cocoa to warm ourselves up from this rain. Ooh, I like that idea. But first, I have to put an ice cube in the freezer for my experiment. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Genesis chapter one, verses nine and 10. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10. He draws up the drops of water which distill as rain to the streams. The clouds pour down their moisture and abundant showers fall on mankind. Job chapter 36 verses 27 and 28. Hey kids, it's Narika and I hope you all enjoyed this episode learning about the water cycle. I've got some questions for you. Are you ready? Question number one. What are the processes that make up the water cycle? Two, what are the six types of precipitation? 
Three, how much water covers the earth? Four, what are clouds made of? Five, through what process does ice become water vapor? Six, what's your favorite type of precipitation? Let me tell you mine. It's a nice summer rain. I hope you guys enjoyed. Goodbye and blessings and see you next time. Bye.